You're going to remove the poly V-belt to remove the coolant pump, as well as remove the idle pulley, yellow arrow. This picture illustrates the routing of the belt for reference when it's time to reinstall it. If you're reusing your belt, make sure to mark the direction of rotation. The red arrow shows the belt tensioner. Note, most of the front of the car has been removed to better illustrate the procedures. You do not have to remove anything other than what is listed in this video. You are also going to have to drain the coolant and refill it at the end. Please see the link at the end of this video for additional assistance. You're going to remove the poly V belt to remove the coolant pump as well as remove the idle pulley, yellow arrow. This picture illustrates the routing of the belt for reference when it's time to reinstall it. With an E10 reverse torque socket and a driver, locate the tensioner and using the torque driver, turn it counterclockwise 45 degrees, red arrow. You can now slip the belt off the tensioner. You can also lock the tensioner into the open position if you need both hands to install a new belt. Turn the tensioner all the way counterclockwise and insert a retaining pin between the rotating part and the tensioner base. If you do not have a retaining pin, you can use a 5mm Allen key, as indicated by the red arrow. To remove the coolant pump, you will first need to remove the idle pulley, which is located right above the coolant pump pulley. Insert a flathead screwdriver, red arrow, between the cover plate and the pulley and gently pry the plate off. With the plate off, use a T50 torque, red arrow, and remove the pulley bolt. The bolt, red arrow, is extra long, so make sure to label it as it's not easy to replace if you lose it. Move to the two hoses that connect the lower part of the coolant pump. Remove the hose that goes to the auxiliary coolant pump from the clip, red arrow, that holds it onto the alternator bracket. Next, using a flathead screwdriver, remove both hoses, red arrows. You may need to run a screwdriver between the hoses and the housing to help break any seal that has developed. Two of the bolts that hold the pump in place are also brackets for the air pump check valve, red arrow. Use an E10 and remove these two bolts first and then zip tie the bracket out of the way. Remove the electrical connection, red arrow, for the coolant temperature sensor so you don't damage it while removing the pump. There are one E14 green arrow, four E12 yellow arrows, and 12 E10 bolts, red arrows, connecting the coolant pump to the engine, and most of them are different lengths. I like to take a cardboard box and draw an outline of the pump on it. As I remove each bolt, I stick it in the cardboard where it came off so I know where to put it back on when I put the new pump on. You can see in this photo from the side how many different length bolts there are and why it's important to keep them in order. Remove the old pump and inspect it for damage. Remember to replace the gasket, red arrow, whether you are installing a new pump or putting the old one back on. Installation is the reverse of removal, and don't forget to refill the coolant. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article, along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.